Hello and welcome again to this particular session and in this one actually we are going to have a talk with respect to independent branches. This is section 5. Independent branches. So far whatever discussion which we have had done that was related to dependent branches. Isn't it or not? So we have already seen that under dependent branches we uh, gone through actually different methods like data system stock and data system finally wholesale branch system also known as branch final system. Now we are talking about independent branches. Now what actually we are supposed to do under independent branches before what we call discussing that let's actually have a look what independent branches are. Name itself is suggesting unlike the dependent branches independent branches they are independent they are not dependent upon the head office indirectly it means they have the liberty they have the freedom to purchase the goods from the local markets because in the dependent branches we have seen actually branch was entirely and fully dependent upon the what we call head office with respect to the supply of the goods but here the branch has the liberty and freedom as i said to purchase the goods even from the local areas and besides that the biggest freedom is that they are going to prepare their own accounts. They are going to prepare their own trial balance. And whatever independent branches we have, all the independent branches are going to actually prepare their trial balances. Let us say there is an head office. Just pay attention over here to understand the replication of this particular topic. Let us say there is a head office. And this head office for simplicity, let us say are having two branches branch 1 and branch 2 and both these branches are independent branches that when complete freedom is there these branches are functioning and operating independently of the what we call head office independently being they are not dependent upon the head office with respect to anything now generally what happens if you happen to be an independent branch you can take your independent decision you can take your de decision regarding sale regarding what we call expenses regarding what we call your purchase even you have the liberty to purchase the goods from the local area as I said but importantly you will prepare your accounts by yourself that means if you are an independent branch you will prepare your account for a particular accounting period and then finally after preparing the account you will send a trial balance to the head office why this independent branch will send the trial balance to the head office I will let you know later on Similarly, if there is branch 2, even this particular branch will prepare the trial balance at the end of the accounting year and will dispatch the same to the head office. Now, let us say this head office has got fixed asset to the extent of rupees 500. And we receive the trial balance from branch 1, which reflected that branch 1 is having fixed asset to the extent of, let us say, 200. And we received trial balance from branch 2 also. It also reflected that this particular branch is having fixed asset to the extent of what we call 100. I am talking about simply the fixed asset. They will send information with respect to every item of account, whether it is fixed asset, property, plant, land, building, cash, inventory, etc. Why actually the branches are supposed to send the, at the end of the financial, send the what we call trial balance to the head office. The reason being is that Head office and its various branches constitute a group. In this case, head office and its various branches will constitute a group. And head office will have to prepare a consolidated balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet basically means combined balance sheet. You just imagine for a while. A State Bank of India is having near about 12,000 what we call branches. 12,000 of branches. If every branch will prepare their own account, then it will become very difficult for the stakeholder to assess the performance of the whole group. Because then we will have to study the annual financial statement of every branch and also the head office to arrive over any particular what we call constructive decision, which is not possible because when we prepare financial statement, Generally, I do not know whether you are aware of it or not. Generally, annual financial annual reports, which contains financial statements also, generally contain near about 50 to 40 pages. You just imagine if one branch will prepare its annual financial statement comprising of 50 pages and there are 12,000 branches, how many pages I will have to study? It is extremely difficult and virtually what we call impossible. 
So that is why what SBI does actually, it prepares a combined what we call financial information that will, it will take into account all the assets of all the branches, all the liability of all the branches and along with that, its own what we call assets and liability, combine them and present the what we call entire information in one single statement. So in one single statement, entire information of the group will be furnished and then it will become feasible for anyone whosoever is having any sort of interest. They can derive what we call, as I said, as I told earlier, constructive what we call conclusions. Similar is the case here. There is head office, branch one, branch two. So head office will ask the branch and give them first of all complete freedom to prepare their own accounts. But at the end of the financial year, they will ask the various branches to submit their trial balance with the head office. Now with the help of those, what we call trial balances, head office will prepare a consolidated a balance sheet. How the consolidated balance sheet will prepare, it's a pretty easy task. For example, in this case, in consolidated balance sheet, the fixed asset will be written in this manner. First of all, head office will write its own fixed asset. Then branch one's fixed asset, that is 200. Branch two's fixed asset, that is 100. So 800, that is the combined amount of the group of fixed asset, as you can see, is being presented in the consolidated financial statement. So that is the idea behind what we call getting the trial balances from the various branches. Even though branch is independent, as I told you, in spite of that, branch will have to actually submit uh, their trial balance to the head office so that head office is in a position to prepare the consolidated balance sheet. So basically under independent branches, we will see that we will have to prepare the consolidated balance sheet. You will be given the trial balance of the head office and the branch and with the help of that, you will have to prepare the consolidated balance sheet as I just told you. So that is the theme of this particular chapter. At this particular topic in order to comprehend this first let me actually pick up 5.2 just have a look over 5.2 first and i will extend the view for you also to have a better idea regarding this just pay attention this is the head office of a business and its branch the head office of a business and its branch keep their own books the head office of business and its branch keep their own books. That itself should be a sort of symptom that we are dealing with question of independent branches. Each branch prepares its own profit and loss account. The following are the balances appearing in the two sets of books as at 31st of December 2021 after a settlement of profits and after making all the adjustment except referred to below. So this is the trial balance. Now, actually, this is the head office is written over here. Actually, the first two column deal with head office and the last two column deal with branch office. This is the trial balance of the branch office, last two column, and this is the trial balance of head office. As per the trial, ba trial balance, we get the information that capital that is written towards the credit side. The first two column belongs to head office. This is the head office trial balance. The capital is one lakh. Quite obviously, the capital will be of head office only. Then as far as fixed assets are concerned, towards the debit side, it is written 36,000 in the column of the head office, whereas last two column belongs to branch. And as per branch trial balance, fixed assets are, as you can see, 6,000 rupees, 16,000 rupees, in fact, correct? Then we have a stock 34,200 of head office, 10,740 of branch. Similarly, daters are there 7,820 and 4,840. Besides that, there are current liabilities, the creditors 3,960 of the head office and creditors of the branch office are 1920. Similarly, cash balance of head office is, as you can see, 10,740 and what we call 1,420 of branch. Then we have profit and loss account. If profit and loss account is given in the trial balance, that means both these entities, head office and branch, have computed their profits also. So 14,660 is the profit computed by head office and branch has computed its profit 3060. So far, there is no problem. Where the problem is, this is first two column belongs to head office. In the trial balance of head office, we have written, see here, Branch office account 29,860. 29,860 and this item is appearing towards debit side. What does it means? 
it means head office is claiming that by the end of this year we are supposed to receive 29,860 rupees from the branch. Head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive 29,860. You must understand the meaning of debit balance. Branch office account balance in the head office account. This is debit balance. Sorry, this item is written towards the debit side, but indirectly it means actually head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive from the branch 29,860. Similarly, you will 99.99% you will find in the trial balance of head office branch account is appearing towards the debit side. Similarly, similarly, you will find that in the branch office account, there is always you will find in the question written head office account and it is written towards the credit side. 99.9% .9 in the branch office trial balance head office account will stand towards the credit side. It means branch is saying that we are supposed to pay you 28,220. Even though I am telling you that branch is being given complete freedom. Even though we are claiming that branch is being given complete freedom to prepare their own accounts. But in spite of that, Head office and branch keep track of the transaction. For example, if head office has sent some goods to branch in the current year, let us say 5 lakh worth of rupees. Obviously, it means head office has sent 5 lakh worth of goods to branch. So, ultimately, it means head office is to receive 5 lakh from the branch and branch at least is supposed to pay 5 lakh to the head office. Logically, if there is proper exchange of transactions, then these two accounts must reflect the same amount logically logically however you can see here the balances are not same if balances are not same it means there are some discrepancies in the sense that some of the information might have not not been exchanged properly that is why the differences is arising but first of all you need to understand head office account which generally appears towards the credit side of the branch trial balance reflects that branch is saying that we have to pay to the head office 28,020 whereas in the books of head office branch account as you can see is reflected towards the debit column it means head office is claiming that we have to receive 29,860 rupees correct well then what is the first step which you are supposed to do but before we pro proceed further let's go through some further information Further, it is written in the question that set out the balance sheet of the business as on 31st of December 2021 and the general entry is necessary to record the adjustments dealing with the following. There are two, there are some adjustments which have been given to you. One adjustment is that on 31st of December 2021, branch office sent a check of rupees 1000 to head office. And this check was not received by the head office nor credited by head office to branch office. Indirectly, it means branch has sent some check and branch sent the check on the last day of the current year that is 31st of December 2021. But however, head office did not receive it by the end of the current year. Correct? So that means this is one such information where proper exchange hasn't taken place. Similarly, if we will go through the next one, it is written that goods value of 840 had been forwarded by head office to the branch on 30th of December 2021. But these goods were not received by the branch. That means by the end of this year, these goods were not received by branch. So we can see that in the adjustment, there are basically two problems. Correct? So now what we are supposed to do in this type of questions. First of all, what you are supposed to do is just pay attention. Your first step should be, your first step should be, one, reconciliation of balances. This should be your first step, reconciliation of balances. What we mean by reconciliation of balances? Reconciliation of balances. What we mean by this particular step and what we are supposed to do under this one? How to reconcile these two balances? The basic problem is this one. We have to reconcile it because both the sides are claiming different amounts from each other. 
Head office is claiming that we have to receive 29,860, while branch is claiming that we have to pay you only 28,020 rupees. This is the problem here. So we have to reconcile. This is the first step. Now, how to reconcile it? In order to reconcile this, first of all, what I am supposed to do, I will write here A, and first of all, I will write here books of head office. Books of head office. In the books of head office, I will write branch office balance. Branch office balance. We can see branch office balance is actually 29,000. This is debit balance, of course. And this is 29,860. This balance is appearing towards the debit side. So, head office is claiming that we have to receive from branch 29,860. Intentionally, I have left some space and then I have written here books of branch. In order to reconcile, I am doing it books of branch. In the books of branch, what I am supposed to do, in the books of branch, first of all, I will write here head office balance. In the books of branch, head office balance is credit balance. That is 28,020, 28,020. That means branch is claiming that we have to pay only 28,020. Generally, the difference arises due to some miscommunication or because of the adjustment which would be given to you, you know, correct later on in the question, which is given in this question under 1 and 2. So, now we look over the adjustment. Now, if you will look at very carefully over the first adjustment, you will find that it is given that branch had sent a check. That means branch has already sent a check of rupees 1000 to the head office, but somehow by the end of this year, this check was not received by the head office. So now when branch and head office, both parties are preparing consolidated balance sheet, branch will tell to the head office that we have sent a check to you and you haven't passed the entry for the same. So now head office will pass the entry for the same. So head office will write an entry and the entry will be check in transit CIT, check in transit account debit to branch office. So now head office will pass the entry. It is known as rectifying entry. Check in transit account debit to branch office account. And this is 1000. Because this entry is already passed by the branch, so branch office will not pass any entry because branch had already sent this check. So when branch had had sent the check, it must have passed the entry at the time itself, isn't it or not? So that is why this entry will be written in the books of head office. Number one. Number two. Now we will look over the second case. Under the second case, we find that goods valued 840 had been forwarded by the head office. Head office has, ha, has forwarded goods 840 on 30th of December 2021. And again, these goods were not received. So now head office will tell to the branch that we have also sent you 840 worth of goods and you haven't passed the entry. So branch will tell, okay, fine, we will now pass the entry. Now in the books of branch, we will pass the entry goods in transit account debit to head office account. Correct? And amount is actually 840. So this entry we have passed now. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, sir, absolutely clear. If it is clear, so whatever adjustment is given to you, first, first of all, you try to incorporate it properly. Having done up with this particular step, what is the next one? Now, in the books of head office, you pass this particular entry. And in the entry, branch office is getting credited. Because in the entry, you have written cash in transit account debit to branch office account. So because now branch office is getting credited, this balance you will write here credit 1000 and again you will compute the revised balance because after having incorporated this entry now the balance again is debit balance but amount is 28,860 28,860 this is credit balance obviously you are going to separate this is debit balance. So new debit balance is 28,860. So now head office will tell to branch that we are supposed to receive from you 28,860 rupees. Similarly, now you will move to the books of the branch office. In the books of the branch office, you have just passed this particular entry. 
in this particular entry head office account as you can see has been credited so you will write here credit and even earlier you were having the credit balance remember one thing so earlier there is credit balance now you are getting more credit so you will add it so now your balance will be equal to 28,840 28,840 so this is the magic with which you will have to do now you can see this these item or these balances have been reconciled so reconciled after having incorporated the adjustment now you can see even branch office is claiming or should i say even the head office is claiming that we are supposed to receive from branch 28860 and even the branch is claiming that we are supposed to actually pay you 28840 actually 28860 and this is also 860 there is totaling mistake 860 so now the balances have been reconciled this should be your first step after having done up with the first step what should be your second step under the second step under the second step you will prepare revised trial balances although in practical life this step is not needed but just to make you understand it properly revised trial balance now you are going to prepare a revised trial balance revised trial balance revised trial balance now how to prepare the revised trial balance the question is this actually all you have to do is to look into your old trial balance and accordingly you will prepare the new trial balance what i mean to say here for example if i am going to prepare the trial balance of branch this is your head office and one is debit side another one is credit side and this is your branch office trial balance debit and credit debit and credit if i will look into the first item the first item is capital so i will simply put here capital i will simply write here capital an amount of capital I will write here towards the credit side as 1 lakh. No question of any capital in the trial balance or branch. Correct? Now the second item which was given to us was fixed asset 36 and 16,000. Intentionally I have left some space and I have written here fixed asset 36,000 towards the debit side keep track of these item 36,000 and in the branch it is 16,000 so I am simply copying the figures from the trial balances which was given to us 34,200 and 10,740 34,200 next item is stock 34,200 and 10,720 correct these items I have written now next item if you will look into it will be equal to debtors it will be equal to debtors I will look into the original question data 7820 and 4840 4840. Just to avoid myself from flipping through here and there, you can see a data 78480. After that, there is creditors. So, creditors now I have written over here. Creditors. Amount of creditors is actually amount of creditors is 3960 towards the credit side of head office and of branch amount of creditors is equal to 1980 191920 not 80 this is the problem 1920 so 1920 is your amount of creditors correct then next item 
after creditors so far we have done capital fixed assets stock debtors creditors and now cash cash is 10740 and 1420 so i will write cash amount of cash is 10740 10740 head office and branch is having cash of 1420 you have written it in the branch office trial balance. Next item is profit and loss account. Profit and loss account is given to you 14,660 and 3060. So profit and loss account below capital. It is not necessary. You can simply write it anywhere. Actually, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to collect the credit side item at one place. So profit and loss account which is given to us is 14,660 and branch is 3060, 3060, correct? Then finally we have here branch office account and head office account. This is very important. Now when you will prepare the trial balance, revised trial balance, in the revised trial balance, then you will write branch office balance and of course head office balance here you have to take care that you have to now put here the revised balances and the revised balances which we computed was 28,860 in the books of head office or branch and in the books of branch revised trial balance was 28,860 28,860. Wait, if I am going to tally, it will not tally. Why it will not tally? Actually, when we prepare revised trial balances, one thing we have to take care of the fact that we have to put the revised trial balances and rest of the item as it is. Besides that, branch office balance and head office balance in revised manner, we will have to put over here, number one. And number two, you have to be very, very clear. You have passed this entry. Correct? You have adjusted this balance over here itself. See, this balance is already adjusted over here and you have written this balance in the trial balance. Similarly, in the books of branch office, this balance is already adjusted here, isn't it or not? And you have put this balance in the trial balance. That means as far as these entries are concerned, which you passed earlier, one part of the entry directly or indirectly is getting incorporated in the trial balance. Then what about the second part? What about the second part? So you have to be very, very clear that second part of the entry also need to be posted in the revised trial balance. For example, this entry you have passed in the books of head office. So cash in transit you will write now in the books in the trial balance cash in transit i will write here cash in transit because i pass this entry in the books of head office and cash in transit is debited so i will write cash in transit 1000 in the column of in the debit column of head office trial balance similarly in the books of branch when i pass this entry goods in transit is debited so i will have to write goods in transit also so goods in transit, I will write now GIT. This item I will write in the books of trial in the books of branch or in the trial balance of branch towards the debit side 840. Now if I am going to balance, then it will get tallied off its own. Is it clear to you or not? Because once you will prepare the once you will prepare the revised trial balance then it becomes very, very easy. It is clear to you or not. Now, after having prepared the revised trial balance, now you are in a position to prepare the consolidated balance sheet. This is your third step. Consolidated balance sheet. Consolidated balance sheet. Now you can prepare the consolidated balance sheet. And in order to prepare the consolidated balance sheet, you need not require to sweat it out. It is pretty easy. It is pretty easy in the sense, for example, all you have to do is just combine the item line by line and present it. 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल कैपिटल वन लैक फर्स्ट आइटम इज कैपिटल बट कैपिटल इज ओनली ऑफ बट कैपिटल इज ओनली ऑफ हेड ऑफिस सो यू विल राइट कैपिटल टू वर्ड्स द लाइबिलिटी साइट वन लैक इज इट क्लियर टू यू और नॉट सिमिलरली नेक्स्ट आइटम इज प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस अकाउंट You add the profit and loss account of both. That is fourteen thousand six hundred sixty and three zero six zero, and simply write the total over here seventeen thousand seven hundred and twenty. Similarly, next item is creditors. You add the item, and after adding the adding the creditors of both head office and what we call branch, you write the amount over here, and the amount will be equal to five eight eight zero. so as far as your liability side is concerned these are the items and towards the asset side you will write your fixed asset 36000 plus 16000 52000 you have to simply keep on combining the item and write the figure out in the outer column stock 34200 10740 that will be equal to 44940 and Similarly, cash amount of cash ten thousand seven forty and one thousand four hundred twenty that is equal to twelve thousand one hundred and sixty. In fact, before that there was an item debtors. You will write the amount of debtors seven thousand eight hundred twenty and four eight four zero seven eight two zero and four eight four zero. The amount will be equal to twelve thousand six hundred sixty. Twelve thousand six hundred and sixty, and finally, then you have written next item as check in transit. Now check in transit, only one thousand will find place in the outer column. Goods in transit, you will write in goods in transit eight hundred and forty. Is it clear to you or not? Now the important point is that you have added all the item. but when you will prepare the consolidated balance sheet you will not write these two items why i will not write these two item because if i am going to combine this one item is having debit balance another one is having credit balance ultimately it will be equal to zero so that is why the respective balances of head office and branch will not be written in the consolidated balance sheet this is what you are supposed to do Sometime question may ask you to pass the incorporation entry. Suppose if question ask you to resolve, then you will have to pass the incorporation entry. Incorporation entry. Incorporation entries. What are incorporation entry? Actually, incorporation entry in practical life are written in a rough sheet. Incorporation entry means. I I have to show that all the trial balance of the respective branches have been incorporated in the books of the head office. For example, branch has prepared this trial balance. Correct the revised trial balance I am talking about now. So on the basis of that, you will pass incorporation entry. The first entry will be with respect to incorporation of branch assets. incorporation of branch assets if question asked then you must pass this entry also and your entry will be these are the various asset fixed asset account debit stock account debit debtors account debit cash account debit and even goods in transit account debit all these items you will have to write so fixed asset account debit stock account debit debtors account debit cash in hand account debit then goods in transit account debit i will write two branch account because these are the assets so amount of asset fixed asset is 16000 amount of stock you will have to see is 
then it will be equal to 4840 data is 4840 then it will be equal to 1420 cash in hand you will look into the column of branch only goods in transit 840 and then you will add all these items correct If I will add all these items, it will be equal to 33,840. Next entry will be for incorporation of branch, incorporation of incorporation of Just wait. Incorporation of branch. Incorporation of branch liabilities. Now, if I will pass this entry, as per this entry, this branch is having only one liability. An entry will be branch office account debit to creditors account. Now, creditors of branch were, let me look into the revised trial balance. This is the revised trial balance. Creditor is 1920. So, this entry I will pass with 1920. 1920. Is it clear to you? Then, last entry, incorporation of branch profit. Incorporation of branch profits. So, this formality you will have to do if the question asked that. Point is this. So, you will write branch office profit and loss account, branch office account debit to profit and loss account. What was the profit of the branch? The profit of the branch was 3060. So, you will write this entry 3060. If question asked to pass the memory, sorry, incorporation entry, you will have to do this thing. Second point is that sometime, because whatever possibilities are there, I must explain them. If question asks you, you to prepare a memorandum branch account, then you will prepare it this way. What we mean by memorandum? Memorandum in accounts means when we do not follow the normal accounting course. Then we use the word memorandum. When I say here I am preparing memorandum branch account, that means I will not prepare the branch account the way actually I was preparing so far. Correct? So that means here I am deviating from the normal procedural aspect of preparation of the branch account. In fact, here branch is synonymous with the balance sheet to be very honest with you. Because as per the entry, whatever items you have written in these entry, you will have to prepare the branch account. Correct? For example, in this entry, all these accounts are debited and branch office account is credited. So, again, you will have to do the formality of writing all these items, fixed asset, stock, daters, then uh, your cash in hand, check in goods in transit. You put all these items, correct? And then similarly, you have passed these two entries. Branch office account debit to creditors. So you will write here two creditors, 1920. And you will write here two profit and loss account, 3060. I'm not writing the respective amounts. You can write the respective amounts here, 16,000. 10,720, I am simply writing the total. So we know that total of this side is 33,840. And total of this side is equal to 33,840. If I will subtract from this total, this total, these items, I will get a balancing figure here. And this balancing figure will be equal to how much? Where is my calculator? Calculator is not here. 
So I will tell you what should be the balancing figure. Your balancing figure will be equal to 28,860. And you will write here balance brought down. You will write here balance brought down. Why you will write here balance brought down? Honestly speaking, you can take it as balancing figure or you can start this account by writing balance brought down. Because in the books of the head office, because in the books of the head office, these are head office books, the branch account is having a debit balance of 28,860. As per the revised trial balance, whatever balance is there in the books of the head office, you can simply straight away write here, balance brought down. However, if you do not want to write it straight away, you can take the balancing figure. In this manner, you can also check whether you have done correctly or incorrectly so far the solution. So this is all about what we call independent branches. Whatever possibilities are there, I have already told you. Now see how I have solved in this question here for you. Reconciliation of balances. I have already done the entire solution, simply telling you. Point here I have written column, uh, point number one, sorry. I have prepared five columns. First of all, point number one, head office will pass the entry, branch office will pass the entry to make you understand as per head office book and as per branch office books. Head office books balance, debit balance 29,860. Head office balance is credit balance 28,020. Then we looked into the what we call adjustment. And in the adjustment check-in transit was written because this entry was already passed by the branch. So this entry will be written here in the column of the head office. That is head office will pass the entry check-in transit to branch account. And similarly regarding goods in transit, Head office has already passed the entry, so branch will pass the entry. And then you will accordingly adjust the balance. Because you have passed the entry in the books of the head office, so in the books of head office, branch balance was having debit balance 29,860. And now branch is getting a credit balance. So you will write here credit 1,000. You will take the difference. It is 28,860. Similarly, you will take the difference. It will be equal to 28,860. Then I prepared the revised trial balance. First, you look into the first foot only till up to here. The trial balance you have prepared, revised trial balance. So accordingly, I have prepared the consolidated balance sheet. All I have done is simply added capital 1 lakh. Profit or loss account, I have added 17,720. I have added creditors balance 5880. Similarly, I have added fixed asset and so on and all this. Correct? So this way around, you can easily manage and do what we call these questions. Now, after having done question number 5.2, I will take up a strong question. This is similar to the last question. But this is a little bit stronger in comparison to the last one, to be very honest with you. Correct? First, pay attention here. As I told you, when we solve such questions, a firm has a head office in Mumbai and branch, independent branch in Kolkata. Correct? Now, you have been given here the trial balance. Now, as far as trial balance is concerned, head office trial balance credit side and debit side is given. Here, similarly, branch credit side and debit side is given over here. Is it clear to you? Profit or loss account, as per the head office book, is 14,660. You can see, correct? Then creditors are 1,23,960. Capital is 3 lakh. And then as far as trial balance is concerned, head office 2,36,000, stock 35,200. So fixed asset and uh, stock 35,200 of head office, branch office is 20,740, data 17,820 of head office, branch is this much, cash head office this much, branch this much. And as per head office books, you can see the balance is towards this side, 1,29,860. Correct? Actually, it's again, it is a debit balance. Is it clear to you? 1,29,860. This is a debit balance because these are the debit balances. Fixed asset, stock, data, cash. So this will be termed as debit balance. 
And now here profit and loss account of head office is this much, branch is this much, creators is this much, capital 3 lakh and 0. Now, in the books of branch, this is your credit side because these are liability side items. So we can say actually that branch is claiming we are supposed to actually give you 1,28,020 whereas head office is claiming we have to receive 1,29,860 from you. Information to be adjusted. Now following information is given. The first thing which you will do is that similar to the last one as per head office books you will write branch office balance is debit balance 1,29,860. The first thing which you will do here like this. Similarly, as per branch office, sorry, this is as per head office and now as per branch office books, head office balance is 1,28,020. This is credit balance. Is it clear to you? Now we look into the first what we call adjustment. The first adjustment says that branch office had sent a check for rupees 1,000 to the head office on 25th of March, but not received by the head office till the next month. Important thing is that by the end of the current year, this check was not received. So branch office has already sent the check. This check is not yet received by the head office. So head office will pass the entry. So you will write entry here. Head office will pass the entry check in transit account debit to branch account. Now because of this entry, because of this entry, pay attention here. Because of this entry, what is happening? Because of this entry, branch office is getting credited. So I am writing here credit 1000. Correct? Now we we'll look into the fourth problem regarding goods in regarding goods. Goods worth 840 forwarded by head office but not recorded by the branch till the next month. So that means head office must have sent 840 worth of goods to branch which were and goods were not received by the branch. So point here is that this entry was already passed by the head office but not by branch. So branch will pass this entry. So that is why in front of point number 4 I have written here. This is point number 4 and I have written goods in transit to head office. Head office account is getting credited. So that is why I have written here credit 840. Is it clear to you or not? Now. Regarding point number 2 and 3, this time you have to pay attention. Point number 2 says that depreciation of branch assets of which accounts are maintained by head office not provided for is 20. Depreciation of branch assets. Actually, these are assets of branch. These are assets of branch. But their accounting is being done by head office. Depreciation of branch asset of which accounts are maintained by head office not provided for S20. What does it mean? That means there are some assets of the branch and their accounting is being done by head office and there is a depreciation of 250 which is still not provided. That means neither head office nor branch has provided the depreciation so far. Important point is that these are the see here look into the column of head office this is point number two regarding this head office will pass this entry branch office account debit to fixed asset account why head office will pass this entry you must understand because when head office will pass this entry head office will have to provide for the depreciation and accounting is being done by head office that means the fixed asset amount will decrease due to depreciation. But whatever depreciation will be provided by head office, that depreciation head office will take back from the branch office. Because these asset belongs to branch. It was the duty of the branch to provide for the depreciation. So that is why head office will pass this entry branch office account debit to fixed asset. Is it clear to you? Now in this entry branch, branch office account is getting debited first of all. Because we are talking about head office, we will look over here as per head office books. And in the head office books, because in the entry, because of this entry, branch office will get debited by 250. So here I will write debit 250. Is it clear to you or not? However, this time, even branch office will have to pass an entry. Because depreciation is not provided so far. 
and depreciation has actually been provided now by head office but head office will recover that amount from branch so that is why head office will pass the entry branch account branch office account debit to fixed asset now branch office will pass the entry profit and loss account debit to head office why because branch office will incur an expense in the form of depreciation however branch will not provide the uh, provide the depreciation the reason being is that these assets are being maintained by the head office so branch is not supposed to actually provide for depreciation however branch will have to pay to the what we call head office so that is why it is a sort of loss to branch and head office branch is supposed to pay this amount to head office so head office account will be credited so for this transaction both the parties will pass the entry and in the books of the head office the entry will be branch office to fixed asset while in the books of branch entry will be profit and loss account debit to head office because of this entry this entry is passed in the books of branch office so in the books of the branch office head office account is getting credited sorry getting credited so you will write 250 so that is how you will keep on doing adjustment to the balances now there is third transaction also the third transaction is that it was agreed that branch office will be charged with rupees 300 for administrative services rendered by the head office during the year now what happens in practical life in practical life what happens head office has got let us say many branches and let us say head office has spent some amount on the adverti advertisement and the advertisement or on the promotional activities of not only head office but also of this branch also of this branch and also of this branch now this expenditure by head office is benefiting every branch so what head office will do head office will try to recover some amount from the respective branches so some some of the portion of the advertisement expense will be charged upon these branches are you getting my point or not so similarly here head office has because head office might be giving some administrative services so they are charging the branch for the same so now the branch will have to actually pay to the head office for the same what i mean to say is now point number three branch knows that it will have to pay to the head office because of administrative expenses incurred by head office on behalf yeah, for the branch is it clear to you so profit of branch will reduce and this amount branch will have to pay to head office so therefore head office account will get credited is it clear to you so profit and loss account debit to head office this entry in the books of branch so in the books of branch head office account is getting credited you will write credit 300 now same entry head office will pass also because head office will receive from branch so branch office will be debited and profit and loss account of the head office will get credited this entry is being done in the books of the head office number one branch office is getting debited so in the books of head office branch account will be debited so after having passed down all the entry now you will find the net balances this is debit balance this is credit deduct 1000 add 250 add 300 you will get net debit balance of 129410 here it is credit and every item is credit so add all the item again you are going to get 129410 so that be now the balances are reconciled this should be your first target now once the balances are reconciled there will be some change in profit and loss account also see head office profit and loss account given to us was 14660 as per the original trial balance profit and loss account balance of head office and branch 14,660 14, and 3060 correct so you will write here 14,660 now in the entry now look into the entry in the books of head office in the books of these are the entries in the books of head office which you have passed sorry these are the entries which you have passed in the entry at this place profit and loss account is getting credited and the amount was 300 so the profit and loss account will also increase when you will prepare the revised trial balance your profit and loss account balance will be equal to 14960 is it clear to you similarly 
profit or loss account of the branch is 3060. Look into the entries which you have passed in the books of the branch office. These are the entries and profit or loss account is getting debited. Uh, here also it is getting debited. So these are the two entries which is affecting profit or loss account. So, so 250 and 300 here it is credit. So credit balances is there. Sorry, we have to look into the branch office account. As per the branch office account, uh, profit and loss account is getting debited. So you will write here debit. Even here profit and loss account is getting debited. You will write debit 250. Is it clear to you or not? So your profit and loss account now as per branch office books is 2510. Now you will prepare the trial balance, revised trial balance, which I just told you. When we prepare the revised trial balance, only thing we have to take care of is that we have to present the entire what we call trial balance, which is given to us. For example, capital, capital was given to us, profit and loss account was given to us, but we have adjusted it now. And the adjusted balances I have written. And similarly, creditors. And then stock, debtors and cash as it is. Correct? As it is, these items will find place. However, when I am going to write, write branch office account, when I am going to write the branch office account, I will write the revised balance. Similarly, when I am going to write the head office account, I will write the revised balance. Important point is this. Now in the entries, I will again look over the entry. These entries I have passed in the books of the head office. I have written here check in transit. So check in transit is debited. So in the books, in the revised trial balance of the head office, I will write check in transit 1000. Is it clear to you? Similarly, goods in transit I have written in the books of head office and debited. So I will write here 840. Whatever adjustment I have done here, these adjustment must be must be properly adjusted somewhere else also. For example, check in transit we have adjusted, branch office we have already adjusted when we were here adding and subtracting the item. Similarly, next item is branch office account debit to fixed asset account. Now fixed asset is getting reduced because it is getting credited and it is getting credited by 250. So when I will prepare the revised trial balance, see here, when I, when I will prepare the revised trial balance, I will write here fixed assets. Where are the fixed assets? Fixed asset 2,36,000. From fixed asset I have subtracted 250 because fixed asset has come down, fixed assets have come down by 250. So the new balance will be 2,35,750. Similarly, so we have taken track of all these entries. Now we will take track of all these entries. Profit and loss account adjusted, head office account adjusted, PL adjusted, head office adjusted, goods in transit. So I will write the goods in transit. So goods in transit 840. That means when I will prepare the revised trial balance, whatever items they, which we have written in the adjustment entry must be incorporated here if they haven't been incorporated anywhere else. So if you have prepared your revised trial balance of head office and branch office, this is head office, this is branch office, all you have to do is to do the line by line addition to get your consolidated balance sheet. This is how you are going to get your consolidated balance sheet. Is it clear to you or not? So you prepare this item, capital amount will be 3 lakh. You will add the profit or loss account 14,962,510,17. 1470 creditors you will simply add. Then fixed asset will be 3,51,750. Then stock will be this much. And debtors will be this much. And cash will be. And check in transit, goods in transit. And as I have already told you, these balances are never ever written in the consolidated figure. So your total consolidated amount will be equal to 4,73,350. Is it clear to you or not? Correct. So this is how you have to actually do this particular question. So on such count now, uh, in fact, in between I received the phone. So what actually I was trying to tell you is that 
after having finished up this particular question shall meet you then now in the next session and of course with something new so till then it's goodbye